this is the reason we have invited for Women on Wellness segment, Ms. Risa Nang, to give us a shot on mindful parenting. Ms. Risa is a licensed psychologist with a private practice in the Ateneo Bulatao Center for Psychological Services. She is also a part of time faculty of the Department of Psychology in the Ateneo de Manila University and the University of the Philippines. She works with children, adolescents, and families providing therapy and parenting seminars. She conducts workshops for basic play therapy and advocates for the rights of the Filipino child. I'd like to talk to you about what is mindfulness and how can we apply it into mindful parenting. Why is it important? And if ever you do want to adopt mindfulness and mindful parenting, how do we begin to practice it? So I'd like to lay down two basic principles about child development. In the National Scientific Council on the Developing Child, they said that young children experience their world and the environment in relationships, and these relationships affect virtually all aspects of their development. And in healthy development, this will depend on the quality and the reliability of the young child's relationships with the important people in his or her life, both within and outside the family. And in our Filipino setting, Leon Alampay, a colleague of mine in the department where I teach in that university, she asserts that the parent variable remains a strong influence in a Filipino adolescent's development. So before we begin talking about mindfulness, let's reflect and rethink about the word mindful, mindfully. First, I'd like us to take this moment to take a short pause and reflect on these questions. As a parent, what impact do I have on my child? What am I teaching my child with my language and my behavior? From the first moment that your child wakes up, and you begin to interact with your child, the quality of your interactions and how you engage with your child. What are you conveying to your child? What does it reflect about your belief system about your child? Do you begin to see your child as a, a, a little person? Do I see my child as an extension of myself? Do I see my child with all her potentials and her uniqueness? Or do I see my child as my little helper? So all these belief systems that you have of my child do impact the way that you relate with your child. A second question that I'd like to invite you to think about is why do I have to practice mindfulness? And why is it important? In fact, some of you may even have thought, can't I parent my child the way I was parented? I think I came up and I think I grew up to be a normal person. So can I not just practice this? And so at this point, I'd like to invite you, if I could also impart to you this morning another alternative way on how you can interact with your child. Are you willing to give this a try? And the third one is, how can I practice it? Maybe if my child is already too old. Can I still be a better parent? So let's now talk about how, how is it that we've noticed how we, how we pay attention to the many things around us. So some key observations with the way that we notice, the way we observe, the way we interact with things and people around us. So a good question is, how and what do you attend to? Have you noticed that your attention and even the way that your mind wanders, it does have implications on how you respond to stress? How do you regulate your emotions? And to what capacity do you extend empathy? Just recently, I was reacting to a very stressful um, moment and I noticed that I was very reactive. I easily um, became upset. So that was a moment when I noticed that I was not mindful. Our mind thinks as naturally and as automatically as our heart beats. It wanders on its own. Have you noticed when you would say our mind seems to have, have a mind of its own? And in many chances or many times, we find ourselves 
mindless. We find ourselves being very reactive and very impulsive. Many times we find ourselves forgetting, where did I leave my glasses? Saan ko ba iniwan yung susi ko ulit? Or um, you sometimes give a knee-jerk reaction and you say like, ay, hindi ko sinasadya sabihin yon or hindi ko nas- sinasadya gawin yon. So these are some examples of when we become mindless. And many times we fall into um, a lot of uh, mishaps. We fall into accidents. We fall into situations where naiipit tayo, di ba? So those are examples when we become mindless. So what is mindfulness? Mindfulness is developing a higher and a deeper level of awareness in noticing at the present moment how your body, your thoughts, and your feelings are responding so that you can extend kindness to yourself and to the other. So let's sit down. Let's sit in for that moment and absorb what is mindfulness. No? So it is, it is a practice where you, all of us, can begin to develop a certain kind of awareness that it is deeper and maybe higher. And it is at this moment, not something of the past that you would be regretful or guilty of, and not something about the future that you would be anxious about. But it is at the present moment, it is now, right now, at this moment where you are. And it is looking at your body, your thoughts, and your feelings, and how you can not just react, but respond. We notice more about our thoughts, our feelings, and reactions, because these are things that we can control, not of other people and circumstances and situations, but of your own thoughts and feelings. And it is being mindful of being, giving the best reaction and response so that you can be kind and compassionate towards yourself and others. I'd like to show you this example. There's a picture here of a person walking his dog. And this person, as he is walking in the park, his mind is full of the many things that he has to attend to. The chores, the responsibilities, so many sensory stimulation around him. But the dog, at the present moment, is just looking at what are the things that's around him. So between the two, between the person and the dog, who do you think is mindful? And who, in, who has his mind full? So this is an example of how we can be more mindful and not be full of so many other thoughts. There has been so many studies about the benefits of mindfulness for parents and children. And these are just some of the studies and the research that has cited the benefits of mindfulness. It has been associated with more positive emotions. It makes people less anxious and more or, or less prone to being depressed. It gives them more satisfaction in their relationships and so brings them less stress in these relationships. And brain activity has been associated with greater emotion regulation. I myself can attest to being more mindful in my relationships with my husband and my own children. So I'm able to practice this. So let's bring this mindfulness into parenting. So what is mindful parenting? It is intentionally attending to the needs of our children at the moment with compassion and being non-judgmental. It is looking at our children mindfully, attending to their needs, attending to um, their unspoken language, their behavior, and giving them the, the best benefit, the most benefit for both of you as a parent and for your children. So let me explain to you what happens when you don't practice mindfulness. So I think um, I'll give you this classic example that when a stimulus is presented, such as um, a wild animal ready to attack you, so this will trigger your amygdala. The amygdala is that um, portion or that 
part of your brain found in the limbic system or in the middle part of your brain, the amygdala is responsible for your unconscious automatic reaction when a stimulus such as a wild animal is presented. So your automatic reaction is to create a fight, flight, or a freeze response. So a lot of us, we either run away, so that is what we call flight, or we have a freeze response, like the, the person on the left, that's a freeze response. Others will have a um, freeze, fight, or a flight response. Now, this is what we call the system one thinking, according to Kahneman in his research. System one thinking is when your mind works automatically, emotionally reacting to a perceived problematic context. And in many circumstances, we can relate to this. When we perceive threat, when we perceive emergency, our midbrain is activated and we give an automatic reaction. So when you see that um, your child trips and falls down, your automatic reaction is to shout, to, to maybe scream and run to your child to save your child. Um, another reaction is if you see fire, so your automatic reaction is to run back to the house and save your children. That is your system one thinking. So what is the science behind the mindfulness? So developmentally, young children from the age of five to six, all the way to probably uh, maybe 16, 17, or 18 years old, the young children are still trying to develop their sense of initiative, their industry, and especially for adolescents, their sense of identity. This is really a period of exploration and autonomy. And the, the neuroscience behind it is that their brains are also developing. At this point, only their brainstem and their limbic region have developed. The purpose of the brainstem and the limbic region, these are needed for your survival and adaptation. And this is where the system one is locked in because this is where you see children being very reactive. They have strong emotions. You see your children when they want something, they want to, they're demanding for something, their automatic reaction is to, to cry, to shout, to stomp their feet, um, sisigaw sila, naiiyak sila, no? So this is associated with their system one reaction. And this is what we call the hijacking of the amygdala. A lot of times when we find ourselves in stressful response, our amygdala is hijacked. We get frozen in that system one thinking because we are only caught at the moment of stress. So we're not capable of thinking beyond the situation. So we react, we shout, we cry, we are stuck. Okay. So from here, when we begin to practice mindfulness, their cerebral cortex, or what we call the system two, begins to develop. So children, as they grow older, perhaps in middle school, beginning middle school, and the cerebral cortex reaches full maturation, guess what? What age? The, the cerebral cortex reaches full maturation upon reaching adulthood. Surprising, no? Because it is only when we reach adulthood that we are more capable of making sound decisions. We're now able to make more deliberate planning. We can regulate our emotions and our body. We can even practice more reflective. We can uh, be more slow, analytical, and conscious in our decision-making, planning, and organization. It is only upon the development of our cerebral cortex, which is the system two, that we can develop insight. And even higher than that, empathy. So as parents, we have to temper our expectations and understand that for children, 
they have challenges in their emotions and behavior because this is still part of their developing brain. So mindfulness gives us a chance to pause. So going back to our earlier example, how can mindfulness teach us to be more reflective, to practice system two thinking? So again, using that same example, if a stimulus of a threat or an emergency happens, previously your amygdala will be activated and so you give an unconscious automatic reaction. But what I'm inviting you to do is that you can slow down such that the amygdala can be disengaged and you can slowly engage your prefrontal cortex and be more deliberate so that your system to thinking is slowly practiced so that when you engage in your interactions or conversations, you can give deliberate responses such as this. So how is mindfulness practice? Let me invite you to four steps. So let me call it the four P's. So the first P is what we call, what I would call the pronto, the first P. So the pronto, in another words, in other words, pronto sounds like, you know, what is the immediate reaction? So in pronto, we have to be aware that we give off an automatic and an impulsive reaction we can be locked in to our system one thinking. System one thinking traps us into misinterpretations. You know, we jump into assumptions and conclusions. And in fact, sometimes we're held in by our biases. You know yung mga stereotypes natin, di ba? Those are part of our biases. We also have to notice we have automatic and learned responses. Learned responses are all our um, instinctive reactions that we have um, practiced in the past. At this point, you know, we tend to bring past memories and experiences in addressing present behaviors. And, you know, sometimes these are not helpful because what happened in the past may not be applicable in the future. So that's the first step, the first P. I call it the pronto. Just being aware that we can give off automatic responses. But our re reaction should not stop at pronto. We should go into our second P. Our second P is what we call pause. So when we pause, it's when we breathe. And we have to ground ourselves. There is some truth to what people say that when you're being upset, when you're being anxious, and you have to count to 10. Hindi po ba naririnig natin yun? Yung sasabihin nila na, kalmado lang, relax. So that's an invitation. Kahit split second, no? we can take that momentary pause to arrest us from being, um, from going through the system one thinking. Para bang siyang runaway train, di ba? We have to ring the bell and take that pause. Let's be slow to react and ask ourselves, why am I reacting this way? So when you take that pause, you are beginning to be mindful. And so from there, you can go to our third P. And this is what we call parsing. So yung parsing is like yung hinihimay-himay natin. So when you parse, it is like breaking down the situation. You try to understand what happened before. What have been the triggering events? What started this? Siguro gutom yung anak ko. Siguro ako rin yung gutom. Um, what are the possible consequences that can happen if I go this way, if I do it this way? What can happen if I do it that way? Or who are the people involved here? Who are the people that I can call? Um, what... What are the, the possible and the other variables that are contributing to the situation or to this um, emergency? You know, so it's breaking it down to um, what are the possibilities. And again, this is part of our system to thinking because we are now engaging our, um, our cerebral cortex so that we can slow down our automatic reaction. 
And our fourth P is when we can begin to pay attention. We observe and notice our verbal and nonverbal behavior. We, we can pick our words. We can choose our words deliberately and carefully so that, you know, hindi tayo nagmumura, hindi tayo nagsisisigaw. We watch our tone. We're very careful with how we convey our, our emotions. So we can be more rational. We can be more reflect, reflective and deliberate and slower. So an example here is when your child throws a tantrum and does not want to change clothes. So how can we practice mindfulness here? So in our system one thinking, we find ourselves emotionally reacting. So yung parang nag-umpisa na tayong magalit, yung lumalalim na yung hinga natin, and you might even begin to go into a rage mode. No? So emotional reaction. And this is where you can see that Oy, this is the pronto reaction. Nagagalit na ako. Naiinis na ako. Gusto ko nang subigaw. So that's the pronto reaction. Now, if you're not careful, your system one reaction is actually activating your child's system one as well. So she begins to think that she's a bad child. She feels misunderstood. You know, so um, your child is upset. You're upset. And then later on, when all things have calmed down, the parent regrets and feels guilty. And so you might notice that this is creating a cycle. So your pattern of reaction triggers your child. Your child's reaction triggers you. And then, so ito yung mga narinig natin na helicopter parenting o kaya you become an uh, a tiger parent or um, you know, alam yung dolphin parenting, you're trying to always be cheerful just to make up for what you think you lack or what you're guilty on. So this is not a helpful and it's not healthy in the parent-child dynamics. At this point, you can take a pause. You can make now that deliberate decision to change the pattern that you and your, do- your child have caught yourself in this cycle. So when you pause, you can begin to have a curious inquiry so that you can practice system two. Approach your child's behavior with interest and curiosity. Hindi yung parang you flagellate yourself and you punish yourself. Oh, what have I done? What have I done? I've been such a bad parent. I can never be a good parent. But, you know, at this point, Practicing compassion towards yourself, you can say, okay, what can I learn about maybe from today's session? And how can I change? So to practice compassion is to change the way you parent. So your attitude now can be more of a curious inquiry. It's looking beyond the action and the behavior of your children and seeing their needs. So these are some questions that you can ask yourself. I wonder why my child did that. Is there is there something that she wants to say that she may be unable to say or unable to express? Is she asking for something behind that behavior? Am I aware of her needs? Or maybe some developmental needs that I have not checked. Maybe physically she is tall, he is tall, but then, you know, biologically, my child is just six years old. I'm forgetting that. Or maybe um, my child is really a morning person. Or maybe my child is, my child has a different temperament. She has a slow to warm up temperament that I'm forgetting. So these are some of the needs that you have to check about your child. And so from these needs, you can begin to evaluate what is the best response that I can give. The response that is proactive and sensitive to both my child and myself. So this is where you you can practice the parsing and paying attention. So I'd like to 
to close with this um, encouragement that when we pay attention with interest and curiosity, this approach of curiosity to your inner experience characterizes the intention for mindful practice. So I would like to close and summarize this morning's um, short lecture on mindfulness and mindful parenting. It is when we can pay attention purposefully with non-judgment and acceptance towards our children. It is important to practice mindful parenting so that you can encourage better communication, better discipline, and motivate your children. And let's practice the four Ps. The pronto, to pause, to parse, and to pay attention. So I'd like to thank you at this point, and I will see you next week for our second part on Mindful Parenting.